no, no, not now. We need to practice for tomorrow. Yes, I know. Well, and we can't do It Takes Two anymore, cos that's a duet and, well, there's three of us now, so I thought we'd crack on with this one. It's not technically a duet, but, you know, every time it used to come on, me and your dad used to run to the dance floor, OK? Right, oh, your mic. Right. Oh, get your mic. Right, you go first. Sometimes I feel I've got to run away. I've got to get away from the pain you drive into the heart. What's up? No. Sorry, just give me a minute. Oh, it's me that should be sorry. I'm trapped in my own little love bubble and your world's falling apart. You and Liv, I mean, I know how much she meant to you. I just miss her so much. But then call her! Get her to come tomorrow! Yeah. Nothing better than a good old wedding to get the romantic juices flowing. Yeah. And tomorrow, when I'm stood up here, singing Beyonce's halo to my new husband under that glitter ball, there won't be a dry eye in here. No, me and Liv are done, Mum. There's, there's no going back. No. No. I used to say the same about me and your dad. I thought I hated him when we first split up. I spent all them years, like, you know, trying to put a planet between us and then... When he first come back here, my heart almost burst when I first set eyes on him. All that love that I'd always felt for him, you know, he was... He was still here. Well, that's all I ever wanted, you know. You and Dad back together. Some people are just meant to be, and that's what it is with me and him. And now, and now we're like one big family. And tomorrow he's gonna put a ring on my finger. And I just want you to be as happy as I am. And everything's gonna be perfect. <laughs> Paul's been lying to all of us for months. How? Huh? That kidnap was fake. He paid Connor to do it because he owed him money and didn't have the cash. Who told you that? Connor did. I saw him hitching home yesterday. And he hates Paul for dumping a minute, so he told me everything. Think about it. You kidnapped Connor because we thought he attacked Vinny. But as soon as Paul gets one second alone with him, he unties him. Tells him to leg it. Tells you to let him go. Look, Connor lies for a living, doesn't he? He nearly killed Vinny. I'll tell you what, it's a good job he has got a mate on the force, otherwise he'd be eating through a straw right now. Well, well I spoke to Connor, and he's no more mates with someone on the force than you are. Paul just didn't want to give Connor the chance to tell you the truth. Go on. Well, have you not wondered why Finney's been beaten up so many times? By random people, for nothing? He wouldn't hurt a fly, would he? Why he's always hurt or injured? He's always got an excuse why he moved in here overnight. So what are you saying? I should have figured it out ages ago. He's messed up, Aaron, he's scared. Of what? Of Paul. He's a liar and he's a cheat, and it wasn't Connor who put Vinny in hospital. Who's his dad? Honestly, it's taken me two husbands and half a lifetime to find the one. <laughs> I thought I was done with love. <laughs> and now look at me, eh? Happy as a woman on the planet. I made up for you, Mum. You wouldn't know it from looking at you. There's something wrong, Vin. And there has been for a while. And it's not the you and Liv thing. <sighs> It's like something's bringing you down. I thought you could tell me anything. <sighs> Your dad's really put you through it, hasn't he? <laughs> you know, if he hadn't have his problems or he wasn't gambling, then Connor and his lads, they wouldn't have laid into you. And the irony is that when they did lay into you, he kicked the abbot. He, he, he hadn't put a bet on for such a long while. You're right, it is, Dad. Just tomorrow, the speech, I'm a bit nervous, that's all. Of oh, course you are. Of course you're nervous. <laughs> Not like you Boris Johnson, is it? You used to gobbing off in public. <laughs> hey, listen. All you've got to do tomorrow is stand there and pretend you're talking to me. Right. Oh, and your dad, just us. Nobody else matters. Right. Can you do that for me? Yeah, of course. What's all this? 
We've got a wedding tomorrow. I've just presented this lad with most expensive pair of cufflinks known to man. I thought I'd walk in here to happy smiling faces. I love him, Dad, thank you. He's just got something on his mind. Has he now? Ooh. <laughs> Don't like the sound of that. No, it's just tomorrow the speech, I'm a bit nervous. Don't be. As long as whatever you say comes directly from the heart, nothing else matters, does it? Because it don't. Because after tomorrow, everything is going to be perfect. We're going to be happy, all three of us. Start afresh, be a, be a proper family. And nothing is going to break us apart ever again. <laughs> oh! <laughs> hey! <laughs> well, it's going to be nice and snug, the Perry, in that room. Well, I can't have a sleeping under the same roof, night of folk wedding, can I? It'll do us just fine for tonight, won't it, Vin? Yeah, correct. Well, Eric said that he'll, uh, he'll do you both dinner and uh, he's leaving you a bottle of whiskey out for any late-night nerves. As if. I've never been so sure of anything, ever. <laughs> right, I'll get around in. Oh, I'm just going to nip the salad and I'll drop one of my sparkly eyelashes down bog this morning. Will you uh, get me a Prosecco, please? Yeah. Stuff it. Bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Forget what she said about your speech. I've told you, it matters. You screw it up, and you and me are gonna fall out. You got that? I will let you down, I promise. You better not. I want my wedding day to be remembered for the right reasons, okay? I want my best man to deliver his beautiful speech wearing my expensive cufflinks that I've bought him and be a credit to me and to Mandy. So let's get through tomorrow without you showing me up, shall we? Leave me now. I still need to hear it from Vinny. If we go and start accusing Paul without any real proof, then he'll talk his way out of it. And he'll take it out on Vinny, will just make things worse. Vinny's not going to admit anything. Have you seen how scared he is? Yeah, and I get that. I know how tough it is to get to the truth. It took me years to even admit what happened with Gordon. But it's his dad. And he loves him, and he can't or won't see it. And we don't have time to help him figure it out. And Mandy has no clue. No, do you think Paul would be alive if she did? She loves him to bits, and Vinny loves her. He'll do anything to make sure she's happy at whatever cost for him. How's he going to tell her? I mean, the wedding's tomorrow, and he's in denial, thinking it's going to fix everything, and they can be this happy family that they never were. Well, like putting a ring on a finger's going to make any difference. We need to make Vinny see. And it might break Mandy's heart, but if he doesn't tell her and stop that wedding, the next time Paul puts him in hospital, he might not come out. 